The Rape of the Lock, Canto 3, Alexander Pope close by those meads, forever crowned with flow single quotares, where Thames with pride surveys his rising toe single quotares, there stands a structure of majestic frame, which from the neighboring Hampton takes its name. Here Britain's statesmen oft the fall for a doom of foreign tyrants and of nymphs at home. Here thou, great Anna, whom three realms obey, dost sometimes counsel take and sometimes tea. Hither the heroes and the nymphs resort, to taste a while the pleasures of the court. In various talk this instructive hours they passed, who gave the ball, or paid the visit last. One speaks the glory of the British Queen, and one describes a charming Indian screen. A third interprets motions, looks, and eyes. At every word a reputation dies. Snuff, or the fan, supply each pause of chat, with singing, laughing, ogling, and all that. Meanwhile, declining from the noon of day, the sun obliquely shoots his burning ray. The hungry judges soon the sentence sign, and wretches hang that jurymen may dine. The merchant from this exchange returns in peace, and the long labors of the toilet cease. Belinda now, whom thirst of fame invites, burns to encounter two adventurous knights, at Singly to decide their doom, and swells her breast with conquests yet to come. Straight the three bands prepare in arms to join, each band the number of the sacred nine. Soon as she spreads her hand, this aerial guard descend, and sit on each important card, first aerial perched upon a matadare, then each, according to the rank they bore. For sylphs, yet mindful of their ancient race, are, as when women, wondrous fond of place. Behold, four kings in majesty revered, with hairy whiskers and a forky beard and four fair queens whose hands sustain a flow single quotar, this expressive emblem of their softer pal single quotar. Four knaves in garbs succinct, a trusty band, caps on their heads, and halberds in their hand. And party-colored troops, a shining train, draw forth to combat on the velvet plain. The skillful nymph reviews her force with care, Amperson quo. Let spades be trumps. Amperson quo. She said and trumps they were. Now move to war her sable matadaras, and show like leaders of the swarthy moors. Spade Leo first, unconquerable lord. Led off two captive trumps, and swept the board. As many more Manilio forked to yield, and marched the victor from the verdant field. Him Bosto followed, but his fate more hard gained, but one trump and one plebeian card. With his broad saber next, a chief in years, the hoary majesty of spades appears, puts forth one manly leg, to sight revealed, the rest, his many-colored robe concealed, the rebel knave, who dares his prince engage, proves the just victim of his royal rage, even mighty Pam, the kings and queens overthrew and mowed down armies in the fights of Lou, sad chance of war, now destitute of aid, falls and distinguished by the victor spade, thus far both armies to Belinda yield, now to the barren fate inclines the field. His warlike Amazon her host invades, this imperial consort of the crown of spades. The club's black tyrant first her victim died, spite of his haughty mien, and barbarous pride, what boots the regal circle on his head, his giant limbs, in state unwieldy spread. That long behind he trails his pompous robe, and of all monarchs, only grasps the globe. The baron now his diamonds pours apace, this embroidered king who shows but half his face, and his refulgent queen, with pal single quotares comb and of broken troops and easy conquest find. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, in wild disorder seen, with throngs promiscuous strow the level green. Thus when dispersed a rooted army runs, of Asia's troops, and Afric's sable sons, with like confusion different nations fly, of various habit, and of various die. The pair battalions disunited fall. In heaps on heaps, one fate o'erwhelms them all. The knave of diamonds tries his wily arts, and wins, O oh shameful chance! The queen of hearts. At this, the blood the virgin's cheek forsook, a livid paleness spreads o'er all her look. She sees, and trembles at this approaching ill, just in the jaws of ruin, and cadile. And now, as oft in some distempered state, on one nice trick depends the general fate. An ace of hearts steps forth, the king unseen lurked in her hand, and mourned his captive queen, 
he springs to vengeance with an eager pace, and falls like thunder on the prostrate ace. The nymph exulting fills with shouts the sky. The walls, the woods, and long canals reply. O oh, thoughtless mortals! Ever blind to fate, too soon dejected, and too soon ill it. Sudden, these honors shall be snatched away, and cursed forever this victorious day. For lo! The board with cups and spoons is crowned, the berries crackle, and the mill turns round. On shining altars of Japan they raise the silver lamp. The fiery spirits blaze. From silver spouts the grateful liquors glide, while China's earth receives the smoking tide. At once they gratify their scent and taste, and frequent cups prolong the rich repast. Straight hover round the fair her airy band. Some, as she sipped, the fuming liquor fanned, some o'er her lap their careful plumes displayed, trembling, and conscious of the rich brocade. Coffee, which makes the politician wise, and see through all things with his half-shut eyes, sent up and vapors to the baron's brain new stratagems, the radiant locked again. Ah, cease, rash youth! Desist ere tis too late, fear the just gods, and think of Scylla's fate. Changed to a bird, and sent to flit in air, she dearly pays for Nisius injured hair. But when to mischief mortals bend their will, how soon they find fit instruments of ill. Just then, Clarissa drew with tempting grace a two-edged weapon from her shining case. So ladies in romance assist their knight present the spear, and arm him for the fight. He takes the gift with reverence, and extends the little engine on his finger's ends. This just behind Belinda's neck he spread, as o'er the fragrant steams she bends her head. Swift to the lock a thousand sprites repair, a thousand wings, by turns, blow back the hair, and thrice they twitched the diamond in her ear. Thrice she looked back, and thrice the foe drew near. Just in that instant, anxious Ariel sought the close recesses of the virgin's thought. As on the nosege in her breast reckoned, he watched this ideas rising in her mind, sudden he viewed, in spite of all her art, an earthly lover lurking at her heart. Amost, confessed, he found his pal single quote our expert, resigned to fate, and with a sigh returned. The peer now spreads the glittering forfex wide to enclose the lock. Now joins it, to divide. Even then, before the fatal engine clawed, a wretched sylph too fondly interposed. Fate erred the shears, and cut the sylph in twain, but airy substance soon unites again. The meeting points the sacred hair to sever from the fair head, forever, and forever. Then flashed the living lightning from her eyes, and screams of horror rent this affrighted skies. Not louder shrieks to pitying heave in her cast. When husbands or when lapdogs breathe their last, or when rich china vessels, fallen from high, in glittering dust and painted fragments lie. Amperson quo. Let wreaths of triumph now my temples twine. Amperson quo. The victor cried. Amperson quo. The glorious prize is mine. While fish in streams, or birds delight in air, or in a coach and six the British fair, as long as Atlantis shall be read. Or the small pillow grace a lady's bed, while visits shall be paid on solemn days, when numerous wax lights in bright order blaze, while nymphs take treats, or assignations give, so long my honor, name, and praise shall live. What time wit spare, from steel receives at state, and monuments, like men, submit to fate. Steel could the labor of the gods destroy, and strike to dust this imperial to single quote of Troy. Steel could the works of mortal pride confound, and hew triumphal arches to the ground. What wonder then, fair nymph? Thy hairs should feel the conquering force of unresisted steel? Amperson quo.